beautiful female green tree python is ready. She got her a little bit of soapy water just to make sure there's another with mice. She was actually in shed, so this will help her definitely shed too. She'll, that'll all come off once we get her into her cage. And we're gonna set her up in her cage. Papa's gonna pick her up. And, or I can pick her up. I think Papa's afraid, but Papa doesn't like getting bitten. I, I love getting bitten. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. Today, we have a snake arriving in a trade I did. It is a beautiful, from what I can see in the picture, Giampura, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, that locality of green tree python female. And she's a, she's a pretty big girl, supposedly. So we'll be expecting that from FedEx, and we'll show you that. I don't know if I'm gonna show you taking it out of the box, but we'll definitely show you setting it up in the cage. And we'll be looking at some boas and some other cool snakes on feeding day here at the facility. Today we do feed some live stuff. So I don't, I don't really like to show live feeding because, you know, it bothers some people. And it's, 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 it's really not something that I, I don't like to show any kind of cruelty to animals. I, it, it, it actually, I, I hate actually feeding, to be honest with you, uh, any kind of prey items to snakes. But I know they got to eat. And so the only time we really show anything would be if it was frozen thought. The ball pythons, unfortunately, as a lot of you guys know, are pain in the necks and they don't like to eat frozen thought. They like to eat live. So sometimes it's easier to feed live, especially to babies. If you guys are having baby snakes that are having trouble feeding and, and you're trying to feed frozen thought, the li they, they like live, they like movement. So you might want to give it a shot. All right, let's go into the snake room and take a look and see if the green tree python came. All right, we are soaking our new Giampura green tree python that I got from my uh, friend Rafael Souza. Do a little trade. And this beautiful female green tree python is ready. She got her a little bit of soapy water just to make sure there's another with mice. She was actually in shed, so. This will help her definitely shed too. She'll, that'll all come off once we get her into her cage. And we're gonna set her up in her cage. Papa's gonna pick her up. And, or I can pick her up. I think Papa's afraid. But Papa doesn't like getting bitten. I, I love getting bitten, especially on, on camera. <laughs> all right, let's, let's bring her in there. Put her in a new cage. There we go. We're gonna be setting up our misting system too because I don't know if we're giving enough humidity to our green tree pythons and our Amazon tree boas, and our emeralds, basins, and all that good stuff. She's big, this girl. Unfortunately, my male that I was gonna breed her to passed. So now I'm looking for a, a breeder-ready male that would be worthy of this beautiful giant pura girl. Absolutely. She's actually got a name. I don't know if you knew that, Pablo. No, uh, MJ. Oh, really? Yeah. I, Originally, I thought when he said MJ it was Michael Jordan, but I, you know she's a girl, so that probably wouldn't, probably not the right abbreviation. But we'll, we'll stick with MJ. We'll keep it, keep the name. She's gonna love her little enclosure here, and uh, like I said, uh, we'll let her get settled now. All right, this is our hypo Amazon tree boa male. He wasn't really making use of the huge cage we had him in, so we got him in a little bit of smaller closure here. I think he's going to do really well in here. And uh, one of my favorite Amazon tree bows that I have. I love the hypos. And I believe the super hypos are, are leucistics. Uh, I don't know how healthy they are or what the, I think they need to really be outcrossed a little more. But at some point in the future, I'd love to see a, a super hypo, get a super hypo. All right, we're going to leave him alone. We haven't put the lights in these cages yet, but we'll have to get to that in the next couple days. A little update on a Galapagos tortoise. Sitting in the water bowl, soaking himself a little bit. And let's put a little more lettuce in there for him. Munch on. He's really black. You know, I had two of these, as you, if you remember. One of them unfortunately died. I, I blame myself. I was putting these guys outside in the um, in the cage, of course, with the top on it, and he one of them flipped over by accident. And I 
think the sun got to him. He just got too much sun. It was a terrible, tragic thing. I felt so terrible. And of course, my good friend Ty Park's been looking for another one for me, but they're not, these are pretty rare, these Galapagos tortoises. And so right now we're just dealing, we just have this one little boy here, or I think is a boy. Just doing a little basket in the, in the light. So now I'm not bringing them outside because it's too risky. When they're too little, they, they can't, they, they're like babies. You gotta, you gotta babysit them. All right, a little albino water monitor update. What's up, guy? You know what? This guy just does not like the camera. He's so calm when it, until I get the camera and stick it in his face, and then he's just like, get that thing out of my face. He's gotten big. Look at this guy. Look how big he's got. He's getting mad now. All right, we'll leave you alone. All right, here's our little, our little guys. These are our double het, black dragon, T positive water monitors. This is our little girl, she's she's our sweetheart. He's pretty nice too, he just doesn't like to be taken out. She's always wants to come out. She likes to crawl my head and mess up my hair. My big girl. Oh, yeah, yes. You guys are starting to bed down for the night, I know, it's like almost five o'clock, so you're like, bedtime. Bedtime for the babies. Bedtime for the babies. Look at that blue top. These guys are the coolest. This guy's the coolest. Well, this girl, I should say, is the coolest. Yes, 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 yes. You're so good. The other one's back there hiding. Eventually, I'm gonna have to separate these guys. So far, they're all right together. They're still little guys. I know, you look at the rubbins. Yes, you do. This guy's waiting for food. This is our zebra granite carpet python male who loves his log. I always have been showing him to you because he's, he's really, uh, enjoying his more naturalistic setup here in his bigger cage. Yes, you're a good boy. I know you're hungry though. You're always hungry. You'll eat every day if I feed you. And you'll get fat. We don't want you to be fat. What a great, what a great pattern for a carpet pipe and that granity look. I love it. And then the zebra makes it even smaller. So this is zebra granite, granite being a recessive trait, zebra being incomplete dominant. And there is a possibility of caramel in there as well, which is an incomplete dominant. Oh, there's log. All right, a little hypo jungle crystal boa. Everyone, see, everyone's hungry. Even my Burmese python over there is hungry. Everyone smells the rats in the room because Pablo's feeding ball pythons now. We took a little break because we were just setting up the screen tree python we got. And beautiful giant pore we showed you before. But this is my little crystal. Every cage I open up, everyone is, is like at attention, ready to eat. Unfortunately, these little guys won't be eating today. They'll probably be eating tomorrow. But the big guys will be eating. They'll be eating. Little male berm. Here's another male berm I have. Actually, this is a female. This is our super hypo. Super Hypo Granite produced a number of years back. She's ready to eat. There's her brother, who's just a Hypo Green Granite Albino. You got a black dragon up there. He's always ready to eat. She ate the other day our anaconda. You saw that when we fed her. Uh oh, another one knocked the light down. Female firm. She's, good. she's only a quail eater. I don't know why. She turned herself into a quail eater. She, she's a vegetarian. We sure did that already, so. And uh, our nice super hype or hypo Russo Red Head Sterling female. Very big bow we have. Let's see. Let me open this up and take a look at her. I was thinking about selling her, but she's been eating really well. She'll probably breed this year. She's looking great. 
under there she looked. So, she smells food too. Alright, this is my hypo. Honduran tea positive, we call that a tea positive sun glow, onyx, boa. That 66% hit for blood, anery two. This uh, girl has really put a lot of size in. I haven't really seen her recently. Look at this girl. This is a beautiful. Onyx, as we know, has a lot of red in it, but it's dark. It's like a very black looking, just like leopard is. And the single copy, it's not as extreme. It has more pattern. But when you add that hypogene, you hit, add the Honduran T positive, you get this like reddish, you know, like almost like clay looking, like, like the, I always think the deserts of Arizona there, that, that look. Really nice looking girl. She's tiny, she's a super dwarf. She was born in 20, she's over three years old and she's teeny. I think she's gonna need, she'll definitely need another year. But she's gonna breed small, and you can see, look at her compared to me. I mean, this is a small snake, but that's what these super dwarfs are, really tiny. Here's her, not her sister, but this is another 20. This one is doesn't have the, the Honduran T positive. This is just a super onyx, and you can see how dark it is. And comparing this one to that one, you can see what the, you can see what that hypogene and the Honduran T positive gene do. It completely changed. Now this is a super onyx, so it loses, it's lost its pattern. It's, you know, the super onyxes are you know, kind of almost patternless, they're very dark. And there's a little bit of a difference, but you can see how dark that onyx gene is without stripping away the melanin. But under that melanin is a lot of red. So this female will definitely breed next year. She's She might be big enough this year, even though she's she seems tiny, but she's got the age on her, but I'm gonna give her one more year and then we'll try to breed her. And then we look at this beautiful super onyx, hypo, Honduran T positive. So this is exactly what I showed you over there, except this is the super onyx form of that. And it's got blood in it on top of that. So it's, you get a, almost a patternless, beautiful red snake. I'm showing you this little boy before, he's gorgeous. But this is the potential of that super onyx gene. And this is also a super dwarf boa. Will never get really big. Um, always stay small. But this is probably one of the, the reddest boas you'll ever see. There's not much more to make this thing redder that you can do to this thing. Think about it. It's got two copies of onyx. It's got two copies of Honduran T positive. It's got two copies of blood. So that makes it a triple recessive, okay, essentially. A triple homozygous animal, at least. And then it's got the hypo gene in there, which is an incomplete dominant. So that's a lot of genes to put in there. I don't even know what would make this look even any redder. I don't think you I don't think there's anything that we could really do to it that would make it redder, to be honest with you. But look at those nice black eyes. Beautiful little snake. Look at this beauty. Beautiful, beautiful. Super onyx. I don't know if there's a hypo gene. This is probably super onyx hypo. I want to say this is blood too. I don't think this is Honduran T positive. This looks like it's blood to me. Very dark eyes. So I'm pretty sure this little girl is going to be is going to prove out to be a hypo super onyx blood. That's what I'm calling it. The only other option would be super onyx hypo hundreds and positive, but I don't think it is. It looks blood to me. It looks like a, it looks like a typical hypo leopard blood. Onyx is allelic to leopard, so it would look pretty similar. To me, this looks like a hypo super onyx blood. Beauty, absolute beauty. I, lo I love that like black mask it's got on his face too. Really, really nice. And we'll finish up with this uh, beautiful female bamboo rat snake who just shed out. So I wanted to show you how beautiful she is. She's been putting on size. It's pretty soon we're gonna be getting her out of this little hatchling rack, hopefully and getting her into a bigger container. Maybe even one of the cages, we'll see. I don't know, I don't know how, how, um, how much of a display animal. These guys like to hide a lot, so they're probably not worth putting in a display cage, but 
actually really beautiful looking. Once again, when they at, right after they shed, man, that's when they look the best. I don't know if, I don't know if Pablo fed her that this week. She'll probably get some food at the end of the week. Beautiful, beautiful. Bamboo rat snake. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed that beautiful giant Pura green tree python. She is big. She is awesome. Hopefully, I can keep her alive. That's, uh, yeah, that's always a challenge with green tree pythons. But she's doing great. I got some really good advice. Um, you know, and I think that uh, the problem with a lot of these green tree pythons and the Amazon em or the emerald tree bows are that people don't keep them damp enough. You know, uh, people I've been talking to, they're talking about like, and Ron St. Pierre told me the same thing, spraying them multiple, multiple times a day, almost like it's raining on them because that's what they're used to in the rainforest there. And you don't want to get them too hot either because they don't like too much heat. So we're going to try that. And another thing that I was told and I, that I'm going to be trying to implement here at the facility is air circulation. I'm buying some fans to put on the back of the enclosures so that will suck air out and, and circulate the air. So we'll have nice, moist, circulating air and hopefully we'll, we'll get some good results from that. You know, I'm all about learning and it's always a, a learning curve. I've, you know, I think anyone who's ever dealt with green tree pythons and emerald tree bows has lost a bunch of animals along the way. And unfortunately it's part of the learning curve. You can, you could research from now till you're blue in the nose Till you actually get those snakes in your facility, in your in your care, it's very hard to to um, to figure them out. Sometimes and you got to kind of figure out your how it works best in your facility. We're setting up some automatic sprays now, Pablo and I. So we're we're working on some new techniques, and uh, I'll keep you guys apprised of that as we set those up, so that you guys maybe can pick up some ideas from us as well. All right, guys, if you're enjoying these videos, show us the love, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.